so in order to generate x-rays we will use particulate radiation or electrons or beta rays and convert the energy that these beta rays have into x-rays okay okay so again coming back to the diagram let's focus here on x-ray generation okay so this is a very 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 basic schematic so you will learn more about the x-ray tube probably in the next lecture but i'll just give you a small uh, introduction so that things that we do uh, further in the lecture is um, understood so let's say you have a tungsten element here so this is the cathode if you will and there is the anode which is made of copper but then it has a tungsten target okay you supply very high voltage over here because of the very high voltage what will happen is electrons flow from the cathode towards the anode that is electrons will flow from tungsten to the target which is tungsten over here so it will flow from cathode to anode and something happens that uh, leads to the production of x-rays okay so we will see what what is that something so this comes under the topic called as particulate radiation interaction with matter so so this is the particulate radiation that will come because that's a beam of electrons so the beam of electrons will come and it will interact with this target over here that's the tungsten target and what will happen so let's say i give you a very real life kind of example so let's say i have 100 kilo volts over here uh you can appreciate how big is this i mean uh we usually use 5 volts back batteries or 1.5 volts batteries so this is 100 kilo volts that is 100 and then three more zeros and then volts yeah so that's the amount of energy or voltage or potential difference that you have to apply and uh, as i told you so why did we change from joules to electron volts would be more clear over here because if i apply 100 kilo volts the energy that these electrons get over here is 100 kilo electron volts so it's so easy so just by knowing what is the potential difference that i'm applying i can quickly calculate how much energy with how much energy the electron will move from cathode to anode so that is the main purpose of converting it to electron volts okay so when the electron reaches the target what will happen so there will be either collision so collision is so there are these electrons that are high energetic electrons that are bombarded on this particular metal over here so they they will produce heat because of friction so that is the most common thing so there is a lot of heat that is generated in the tube and does you have to have a very good uh, heat sink or you you should have a very good i would say you should have something that will cool your device so that's one and the other thing that happens is called as radiative transfer which produces x rays so heat is something in this particular context that we don't want but we get because we cannot do anything about it but the focus over here is x rays so how do we get x rays there are two different steps again as i mentioned in the start it is probabilistic so there could be few electrons 
that collide with the k shell electrons of this particular metal so they take part in characteristic radiation or they are responsible for the x rays that are produced uh, using the process called characteristic radiation and then there are some that in some sense collide or interact with the nucleus of the atoms of this particular uh, target and those take part into something called as this is a difficult word to pronounce <laughs> so this is a german word uh, for breaking so bremsstahlung if i i'm i don't know if i'm right or wrong but yeah so that's breaking so breaking radiation okay so let us see characteristic radiation and bremsstahlung radi breaking radiation uh, one by one <laughs> 